All right, folks, it's Boston on a Friday, and uh, not many people thought we would ever say this at any point this year, but the Raptors looking for their fifth straight win. And, Eric, that's something that, uh, you know, has some people shaking their heads. And, you know, we talked about it the other night on postgame. Who'd have thought at this point in the year that the Miami Heat would have only two less losses than the Toronto Raptors? Well, the interesting thing with this team as well, Jones, you just think where it was, you know, seven, ten days ago yeah. with the Raptors sitting at – at two and nine, there was doom and gloom, and uh, you know some people were sending emails and tweets and everything else. Uh, you know, is is Jay Triano's job on the line? Is Brian Colangelo's job on the line? Well, suddenly a four-game winning streak, a trade that that for the most part seems to be getting a lot of positive positive vibes around yeah. the league and definitely around the city. And all of a sudden things turned around a little bit. You're still stuck three in terms of 500 at six and nine, but an opportunity maybe to make it five in a row tonight in an extremely difficult place to yes. win. Yes, yes. They haven't won. In what four straight ball games? Now it's been the, since the uh, 06 07 season since they last won here. But you got to be carrying a little bit of confidence, knowing sure. not only did you knock off this club just a few days ago, but you've got that four game win streak, and you're, you're starting to get those juices flowing a little bit more right now. Combined with the fact that they played well against the good teams, they played well against Miami, played well against the Lakers, they beat Orlando, they right. beat in Boston. So um, you know maybe this team is you know making their name on hard work and being able to hang their hat on on the effort that they put in. Uh, you know, we saw them go through practice today. They had a chance to look over and do and look out for some of the stuff. Boston, we still don't know about Rondo. Game time decision probably won't play. Doc Rivers talked about the fact that they do have a few days off, so why push them for just one game? Let them rest a little bit more, and then they've got three days off. But uh, and that could be something the Raptors look to expose as yes. well, given the fact that, granted, Nate Robinson went off for 16. Uh, in that game on Sunday in the first quarter alone. Finished, I believe, with 22. 22. Though, so they held him in check the rest of the way. But also Delonte West breaking his wrist on Wednesday yeah. against the New Jersey Nets. So Nate Robinson and Marquise Daniels will have to run the point uh, for the Celtics tonight if Rondo doesn't play, and obviously with West not available. And that's something that if you're at Toronto, you've got two sort of not really traditional point guards, at least one with Marquise Daniels is going to see some uh, you know, some time as the backup, and maybe that's something that you try and expose a little bit. Yeah, the other thing is Shaquille O'Neal coming off a big game, a season-high 25 against New Jersey. But he was brutal against Toronto. Yeah, one for against Toronto. And Jay Triano talked about it at practice today, the, the fact that they're not afraid to use their fouls liberally against Shaq, and you know it slows the game down, it, it makes the pace a little bit choppier. Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, they don't get into a flow. Things kind of become disjointed, so don't be surprised to see, as he even told us, Maybe Joey Dorsey in there at times if they're getting, you know, um, getting to the point where they have to use fouls coming from other people. So Shaquille O'Neal's a guy, and, you know, I, I know he's been in the league forever. People say, ah, he's not what he once was, but you know what? He ain't shrinking. He's not getting any shorter. Maybe he can't jump or run the way he used to, but he's still a load, and you still have to game plan for him, and I think that's what Jay Triano's taking into account. Tune into the pregame show tonight because speaking of the Celtics and Shaq and, and, and KG and everything else, not only does Jonesy go one-on-one -on -one with Jose Calderon and Andrea Bargnani, but I go one-on-one -on -one with Reggie Evans, and you're going to have to listen to the interview to hear some of the uh, comments yes. that Reggie has regarding the trash-talking of KG and how sometimes the talking might look good when the lights are on and the cameras are on, but who's really willing to step up and talk when the cameras are off and the lights are off and it's behind the scenes? So listen to Reggie Evans for that later on tonight. We're on there at 7 o'clock with the pregame show, 7.30 tip-off. And by the way... Boston is one of the few places in the league where there's actually a gymnasium inside the workout facility. With a basketball so court. So we actually had a chance to get on the court and play this morning. And 50-plus, kicked butt again. I believe we played eight games. I got them once, though. I got them once. Yeah. Not one-on-one. -on -one. It took the team. It took the team effort. But Jonesy was 7-1 and one today on the king of the court. I think I went 5-3. and three. So... Hey, he played for the country. I didn't. You know, I was just mucking and grinding it's, up it's, there. It's great. It's great to get out there, give you a workout, and uh, you know, guys like Reggie Evans. You were talking about Eric, as Jack said. He gives hope to all of us that uh, <laughs> maybe have the gravity machine working on us. That's our, all I was doing today. Was rebound. I couldn't hit a shot. Just get those elbows sharp and mm, down low. He wasn't like Reggie though. He was finishing it off though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're done for now. All right, folks. Seven o'clock pregame. Seven thirty tip.